Welcome back to another episode of Island Bike Life. Today we're going to be checking out the Yeti SB130 and the 150. These are brand new bikes from Yeti Cycles following the release of the SB100 earlier last year. They fall into that mid and long travel 29er category that's very popular on the market right now. As their name suggests, the SB130 comes with 130 millimeters of rear suspension with a 150 fork paired up front. The 150, of course, comes with 150 mils out back paired to a 170 up front. These bikes are marketed as a trail and enduro bike and a full-on enduro race bike. They come in five different trims from GX up to XX1, as well as a frame-only option for both. The frame-only option, of course, only comes in their Turk series. The entry price into one of these bikes is going to be very steep compared to others. You're looking at about $7,000 Canadian, anywhere upwards of $13,000 with the option of about a $1,000 carbon wheel upgrade from DT Swiss. There's a lot of similarities between these two bikes when it comes to the geometry numbers. They're both on the cutting edge and most progressive numbers out there on the market. That includes a 44 millimeter offset fork, really, really slack head tube, steep seat tubes, and long wheel bases. With a very roomy cockpit with increased reach over what you would traditionally see on bikes in their sizing categories. The numbers specifically is a 64.5 degree head tube on the 150 versus a 65.5 on the 130. The seat tubes are the same at 77 degrees, with the 150 being a little bit longer in its wheelbase at 1248 versus 1230 on the 130. The reach on both bikes is the same on a size large at 480 millimeters, with the same size chainstays at 433. There's been a lot of revisions uh, with these bikes uh, this year, most noticeably in and around the Switch Infinity Link area, which is Yeti's patented uh, platform for pedaling, which includes a pivot floating on two Kashima coated rails that help the bike not only pedal very efficiently, but become very lively when going downhill. There's a new shock extender, which allows for better kinematics and progression on the bike's uh, progression and leverage ratios. And as a side benefit, allows for a water bottle inside the main triangle. There's about a pound and a half or so difference between the two bikes with the SB150 getting a slightly different carbon layup on both types of frames, which is tested to Yeti's DH standards. The kit differences between the two are reflective of the types of riding that they're intended for. For instance, uh, guide brakes on the 130 versus code brakes on the 150. The suspension setup also is slightly different in that the 150 on the higher end models will come with a Fox 36 Grip 2 damper and an X2 in the rear versus a Fit 4 and a DPX2 on the 130. Both great suspension setups but meant for different things. When it comes to climbing on these bikes, I'm not going to be one of these reviewers that says that these bikes climb exactly the same or the 150 is just as good as the 130 because that just isn't the case. The 130 is an excellent pedaling bike, both climbing and on trail riding. This bike absolutely shines. It is nice and firm. It feels like it has significantly less travel than it does. I've never once needed to, to use the, the lockout on the rear shock and the lower weight of the bike definitely helps as well. The power transfer is instant and the bike has no problem getting up and over any type of obstacle you're going to throw at it. And I would have no problem taking this thing on a long epic four or five hour ride. I would not be tired out by the pedaling platform on this bike. No questions asked. Now, that might make it sound like the 150 is a slug and it isn't. The 150 is hands down the best pedaling long travel 29er with 150 or 160 or 170 mils of travel that I've been on in the recent past. For what it is and what its intended purpose is, the SB150 climbs incredibly well. It's not quite as efficient as the 130, but it's going to get you to the top, no problem at all. I've had my own bike now for several months and I've never used the lockout switch on that either because it is that good. 
But these claims that they're so close in their pedaling platform that why would you pick a 130 over a 150? I don't believe that's the case. And depending on where you ride, you're gonna notice that better climbing platform on the 130. So it's something to take in mind. When it comes to trail riding, this is another area where both bikes really do shine, but the 130 does take the lead in this area. It's a snappy bike, even though it is very long. It hugs the ground really well and traverses areas in a really fun manner. It's a nice trail bike. It's designed to be a nice trail bike. The 150 shines in this area as well, but it is a little bit heavier and it is a little bit more cumbersome to get around things. I never found on either bike that I had issues with tight switchbacks or technical climbing or technical trail riding, so long as I kept my weight over that front fork, which this 44 millimeter offset really does require you to do to get the most out of the bike. Once I got used to that, I found really no major difference in those tight technical situations between the two bikes. But overall, on a long cross country or a mild trail ride, the SB130 would probably be the bike that I go to. Now, when it comes to descending, this is where other reviewers will say that the both bikes are kind of similar. You can take the 130 into an enduro race. And yes, that's 100% true. But the 150 so vastly surpasses the 130 in its downhill ability, it's not even close. The 150 will take anything you want to throw at it. The rougher and faster you can go, the better this bike is going to perform. Everything about this bike is designed to get you down the hill as quickly and efficiently as possible. It will roll over anything you throw at it and it feels like it has gobs more travel than what it actually does. The 130 is very fun going downhill. It is very confidence inspiring, there's no doubt about that. And you can take it down some rowdy sections of trail. But it's not meant to be an enduro race bike. I would have no problem taking this bike anywhere on Vancouver Island on some of the craziest downhill stuff that we have. I'm gonna get down, it's not gonna be any problem at all. But I'm not gonna have as much fun as I would as if I was on my 150. This is another area that really defines those gray areas and those blurring lines between these two bikes. It's on the pedaling side and the descending side where these two bikes really are split, with that trail riding being a pretty happy medium. Overall, in descending, the SB150 wins this one hands down. So what are my final thoughts and who should pick which bike and which one might be the right one for you? Well, if you live in an area where you primarily ride cross country or mild trails, the SB130 is probably going to be your pick. I would make the argument that for Vancouver Island anyway, the SB130 would be probably the perfect bike for anybody and any riding network that we have here. That being said, if you're a rider that really wants to get the most out of your descents and is willing to sacrifice a little bit of pedaling efficiency and a little bit of fun on the trails, then the 150 might be the one for you. Or if you live in a place where you're primarily focused on downhill and all of your ups are shuttles, the 150 is the no brainer here. Ultimately, it's going to come down to what you're willing to trade off and what you're 
uh, hoping to get out of your rides. I can say for me personally that I went for the 150 for a few reasons. I wanted a bike that I could grow into uh, based on my skills. Uh, I'm continuing to advance and going downhill quickly, uh, jumping, dropping, doing gaps, doing doubles, uh, taking more aggressive downhill lines. I wanted a bike that would give me the confidence to take more challenges than I would on other bikes potentially. But I also wanted something that I could pedal anywhere that I wanted to on Vancouver Island, which is this bike certainly can do. I've had bikes in the past that were similar to the 130 that I didn't feel gave me that ability to confidently push my skills to the point of being uncomfortable, which the 150 definitely does. So in the end, it's really gonna come down to what kind of rider you are or what kind of riding you're looking to do. I'm ho hoping to do a number of enduro races and the Trans BC in the next year. So the 150 for me was a no brainer. If you're just looking to go out and have fun, pedal with your buddies, go on big, long two, three hour rides, then maybe the 130 is for you. The best way to know for sure is to take one out for a demo. The guys down at Beaufort Cycles in Cumberland, BC have both of these on demo. Take them out there on that amazing riding network. You're gonna know pretty quickly which one suits you best. Thanks again for tuning in and I hope you like this comparison between the Yeti Cycles SB130 and SB150. If you like what I'm doing here, think about hitting the subscribe and the like button. Leave me a comment down below and come and find me on Instagram. And as always, thanks again for watching. Now let's go hit the trails.